Hey guys, it's me Ken Joe, you say reader, welcome to another video and for today I'm going to share with you all the books I've read in the year 2022. I'll be sharing with you also a very short review of all of these books I'm about to present and um, how I rated them. So without further ado, we'll start with the very first book I've read and that's going to be If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. Uh, this book was given to me way back in 2021 as a gift and uh, the main reason why this person gave it to me because of uh, the cat as well, because of the cat as one of the main characters. After reading this book, I loved the book. It was really emotional. It was also really short. Um, and I gave it four out of five stars. So if you're looking for a very emotional read with a little bit of magical realism, um, uh, want to talk about a book that I want to talk about or tackle about mental health problems, um, this one is really for you. But there's going to be a lot of trigger warnings. So please uh, prepare yourself before reading that. But uh, yeah, it's a really emotional read. Gave it four out of five stars. The next book I've read after that is another book which uh, includes also a cat in it. Uh, this is The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. This was also given to me back in 2021 as a gift. Um, I believe it was a Christmas gift, yeah. And um, this one, I read it because I really love this one. There's cat in it. Uh, this one, one of the main characters is also a cat. Uh, her name is actually Nana. And um, this is probably one of the best books I've read this year. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> because I'll be posting also a video after this one. Uh, the title of the video will be the best books I've read in 2022. So yeah, you'll have a heads up that this is going to be part of that list. Um, the Traveling Cat Chronicles made me cry. I cried uh, towards the end. It was really emotional. Um, what can I say? It's, we're going to follow our main character who adopts a stray cat and then they created this bond and then they're going to travel to a, uh, different places in Japan and we have to follow them uh, through their journey. So we have the perspective of the main character who owns the cat and uh, we also have the person uh, going to take a look at the perspective of a cat um, trying to watch his master or how his master interacts with the people they meet along the way so it's really emotional um, as much as I want to tell you more about the uh, details about this book I just want to keep it simple because I believe that you are going to enjoy this without you no know, uh, knowing a lot of what this book is all about but yeah highly recommend this if you're looking for a very emotional books with cats this one and if you really love japan this one is highly recommended for you the next book i've read after um traveling cat chronicles by uh, hiro arikawa is going to be uh, day zero it's actually a prequel of one of my all-time favorite books which is um sea of rust by c robert cargill so day zero was great or was written after um sea of rust uh c robert cargill wrote this uh, because of uh, you know a lot of people want you know uh, more lore of the world of Sierra so basically the day zero is going to be we're going to follow our main characters uh, on the day of uh, the the start of the apocalypse so it's a prequel of uh, the story of Sea of Rust the, uh, the, the story of day zero was actually mentioned several times in Sea of Rust so we have we can get this um, connection uh, especially if you've read Sea of Rust. If you're going to ask me um, if you have to read Sea of Rust before reading Day Zero, um, you can but it's not um, uh, required but I think you'll be able to appreciate either the books if you're going to read them both. Uh, with regards to the order if which of these books are you going to read first it's really up to you. Um, I think it will be better if you're going to read Day Zero uh, because it's a pre prequel and then when you read um, Sea of Rust you're going to have this better experience because you're going to read it in a chronological order so basically this book is all about um, when AI powered robots starts to revolt against humans because they wanted more rights uh, and then they were not being heard by the human civilization so they started to revolt against humans and eventually tried to kill all humans uh, and the sea of rust we are following our main characters the robot where it's like thousands of years after the event of the revolution on day zero and and but on the day zero 
we're just going to follow some of the humans and um, the robots because some of these robots were actually, you know, uh, household robots uh, were made to serve, especially uh, a maid robot or a teacher robot. So they have this connection with especially kids or other humans or their masters. So there are some conflicting, um, phil <laughs> um, conflicting feelings or ideas towards who are they going, what are they going to do, what uh, these robots are going to do, are they going to follow their species, the robot uh, species, or they're going to still serve and be loyal to the the humans that they are serving. So it's, there's a little lot of um, what you call this one, opportunity for discussion. Uh, it's a highly recommended book and I gave Day Zero a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I've read after Day Zero by C. Robert Carjo is another 5 star read and this is going to be The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. Um, initially, I read this on an ebook format, and uh, but since I really loved it, I looked for a physical copy and just found this on Shopee, a very gorgeous cover. Um, basically, this is just from the word The Comfort Book. It's like a collection of insights by the author. So basically, the author is really vocal about his mental health problems. So in this book, he is trying to give, you know, motivation, comfort uh, through his experiences battling his own demons or his uh, overcoming his mental health problems. So if you can relate to the author, if you need help, if you need comfort, then this book is really for you. I hope you're going to find comfort and find hope uh, after reading this one. It's a really special book, highly recommended. It's really short. Uh, I suggest also that you're going to read this um, not in one go, but just read it at least three passages or three pages per day. Uh, just, you know. The next book that I've read after The Comfort Book of Matt Haig is a book that I started reading three years ago. Technically four years ago because to, this today is 2023. This is The Words of Regents by Brandon Sanders and the second book of uh, the Starlight Archive series. Um, currently, there are four books. So I read the Way of Kings years ago, and I tried to read it uh, this one after the Way of Kings, but I failed because it's really huge. Not because the book is bad. I actually gave this one five stars. I, I felt that this one is better than the Way of Kings because Way of Kings was really on another tier. Good. Um, it was really good. Uh, it, it was almost legendary. The world, the characters, but this one was even better because of the progress of the plot and the development of the characters. Um, yeah, and I'm really looking forward to read Oatbringer um, probably this year. If not, I'll do my best because I have a lot of books that I want to read and Oatbringer is really thick and I'm not in the hurry again because the series is still ongoing. We don't know when is book, when is book five go are going to come out, book six, and how many books will be there be in the series. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one as much as we want to talk about what this book is all about. I don't want to spoil you, so I'm just going to give you an insight of what The Way of Kings is. So it's a adult high fantasy. It's a really high fantasy. Um, and yeah, read this. <laughs> the next book I've read after um, The Words of Regents is going to be uh, an ebook format. It's going to be a literary science fiction. A slash science fiction literary I don't know between the two it's going to be um, Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishiguro the only reason why I read this because I want I'm one of the judge of the bookshop prize for group E and this is one of the books that I need to read and score and um, I've heard a lot of good things about this one because since Kazu Ishiguro is a really famous author uh, he's a Nobel Prize winner author etc uh, and also, um, this is having a lot of hype because of some YouTubers recommended it. So I was interested uh, before reading this one. Um, it's a really intriguing book. Um, it's talking about... I'm actually really conflicted. I'm going to be honest as early as now, I'm, I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Um, main reason why is because probably it... My, my experience in reading Sea of Rust by C. Robert Cargill and uh, um, Day Zero might have affected how I saw Clara and the Sun because they have similar themes, not similar, they have a bit of similar themes to be exact, where 
Clara in the Sun also has this robot which has this AI powered robot and they are trying to develop emotions just like you know the robots that I've encountered in Sea of Rust Day Zero. Uh, but this one is just really narrowed down into this single robot who's being you know displayed in a robot shop where people were you know passing by uh, she was being displayed in front and she's trying to observe the street the past the, the some customers and she was really hoping that someone is going to buy her and eventually you know fulfill her purpose in life which is to serve uh an individual um so the day comes she got uh, someone bought her and then they de develop a bond and eventually she were able to develop some of the things that I did not really expect for a robot to develop to be exact um, you know how she thinks and how she she feels um, as much as want to discuss this book to you um, I don't want to since I don't want to spoil you but I felt like the the, the book was really dragging there were really some problems for me uh, with regards to uh, the how the story goes there are some parts probably almost a third of a part uh, of the book that I felt really bored. Uh, I give it 3 out of 5 stars. The writing was superb though. I really love to check other works of the author because I really love his writing but I think the overall the story wasn't really for me. I was expecting it will make uh, a lot of impact at the end but after reading the last page I was just like okay at least I'm done. At least I finished the book. So it was nothing extraordinary. It was not that bad also it was just average read the next book i read after clara in the sun is going to be a book that i heard a lot of people recommended to me especially in the you know fantasy adult fantasy community in social media um this is this book i have been eyeing to read this few years ago but i never got the chance to pick it finally in 2022 i did pick the Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. And the main reason why I picked this one because I've heard that there's a lot of great connection, great relationships between the characters, which I am a character-driven book. I became a character-driven book because I used to be, uh, oh, sorry, a reader. I am, which is I am a character-driven reader. Uh, I became a character-driven reader, which... I am not because I was so, uh, I'm used to be a plot driven reader but this one uh, since I've heard that the characters had a great you know relationship with each other their motivations towards each other um, there's also a heist so I was really intrigued and um, I just gave it 3.5 stars 3.5 ish stars the main reason why is because um, I didn't like the world the, I don't, although the world was so rich it was so cinematic Describe properly there's a lot of details but I, did, I felt like it was really dark um, maybe that time while I was reading this book I was really looking forward to read a book which will give me sunlight um, breath of fresh air but this one it was really dark it felt like while I was reading the book I can smell bad <laughs> the, the smell of the canals smell of you know human feces etc it was really dark and also um i was really expecting a lot from the heist um it was cool though but i was expecting more probably so my expectations were actually not meant so that's the main reason why i was kind of disappointed but overall the magic system was just okay i also expected by the way that there will be great magic system we're going it's going to be high fantasy which i'm wrong because this there's a subtle magic only um, in this in this book. Not all the characters have magic. It's really more focused on the heist and the relationship with these characters and their goal of you know stealing something. And there's just a little bit sprinkle of magic all over it. So I was kind of disappointed because I was really looking forward for a high fantasy. So I don't blame the book. I don't blame the author. I don't blame the people who recommended this to me. I just blame the hype because I my expectations were were really high and the book was able to meet my expectations so i'll still be reading the second book though i has, i have the book two and book three a physical copies on my shelf so i might pick second book this year all right the next book i've read after scott lynch the lies of Locomora is another um science fiction by the author matt Haig. after reading the humans matt Haig, 
uh, last year, I well, became a fan of him because I really love the humans. Um, the, the story of the humans by Matt Higgs really stuck to me after reading it last year. So I picked the comfort book. Uh, after picking the comfort book, I said, okay, I need to read more of Matt Higgs. The Midnight Library. The main reason why I did not read this prior to reading The Human because I don't want to be disappointed uh, because of this is really overhyped. It's actually one the best book or a science fiction book in 2021 on Goodreads. So there's really a lot of people. It's really popular. So this one, I give it five stars. <laughs> um, even though there's really overhyped, but I was able to manage my expectations. I said, okay, I know this is going to be overhyped, so I'm not going to expect a lot from this book. I'm just going to manage my expectations. So I did try to pick this and read this actually uh, on the first month uh, in January last year, but I, I discontinued it. I almost DNF it because on the first few chapters of the book, it was really depressing. <laughs> so trigger words again, Matt Haig. He is really vocal of his mental health problems, and while he was writing this book, I think he was channeling those energy, uh, those negative, mad, your negative mental health problems energy, uh, on the pages. So I was really feeling it. I was able to really empathize with the characters, especially when one of the cats died. I'm a really don't, I really love cats, and I don't want to read or hear or see videos or you know about cats suffering or cats dying and this one this book really gave it to me in the first few chapters and I was like okay after reading that the cat died I said okay I can't take this I was really triggered I really felt sad um, and that's just one of the triggers uh, on this book so please uh, before you read this make sure that you're in good mental health uh, mental state rather uh, because this is going to trigger you. It's going to be really depressing. It's only going to be really hard. This book is all about our main character dying. And then once he died, he woke, uh, woke up to this midnight library where she was given a chance to revisit all the possibilities um, her life could have been when she was still young. So she is going to open the books that she found in the library and each book has a different multiverse of what her life could be if she did this, if she chose to do this. So she's going to live through it and see if she's going to be happy. If she did, you know, all of the what ifs she was able to experience it was really depressing, really dark. So, um, but I was really glad I was able to survive all the triggers and finish reading the book. And um, yeah, I'm really glad. Uh, it was really emotional in the end. And uh, I've learned a lot of lessons. So, yeah. Give it 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I've read after The Midnight Library is going to be The House in the Cerulean Sea by, uh, sorry, by TJ Klune. Um, this one is also really overhyped on social media. A lot of people really love this. So, when I was about to read it, uh, when I was planning to read this one, I also did try to manage my expectations. I lowered my expectations. I said, okay, I'm not going to expect too much from this book because I know that it is going to be, yeah, it's just going to disappoint me if I really expect too much because I've heard a lot of great things about this. It's a good thing that I did that because I, the book was okay. It was, I gave it actually four out of five stars or 4.5 out of five stars. It was really okay. It was really simple. And um, it was something that I was looking while I was reading The Lies of Lachamore by Scott Lynch because this is a breath of fresh air. And while reading this book, I felt like I was really on a vacation on this island where the story, uh, most of the story happened. And uh, there's an LGBTQ um, themes and there are some, you know, children with great uh, special powers and the, the innocence of children and the interaction of the two adult characters to these children and how they... Uh, their rel relationship with each other developed all throughout the story and also how they were able to survive some of the challenges they experienced as, as a group in uh, it was really fulfilling it was it was it was an easy read it was a feel-good book uh, I, uh, I just really smiled most of the part while reading the book so yeah it, I gave it four out of five stars and also the writing style was direct to the point it was not really complicated that's what I really love about TJ Klum so it was an easy read the next book I read after the house of the Surreal Sea is going to be Fireborn by Rosaria Munda this one also the main reason why I picked this because I heard that 
you know, I not heard. Uh, one of my YouTuber uh, that I follow or really adored here uh, really, really pushed her viewers to read this. So I gave it a try, um, and I was not able to manage my expectations. So I was really expecting a lot because I really trust uh, these YouTubers. Um, decision. So I picked Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. I also got this from National Bookstore Sale. So it was really, uh, you know, um, a destiny for me to to read it since it was on sale for a really cheap price. Um, I read it. It was it was really it was just okay. It wasn't great. That's what that's what I've heard. It was okay. Um, I actually gave this one a three point five ish, or between three point five or three point or probably four out of five stars. Um, it was really fast paced. It started really f fast and then it got to some point somewhere after the middle where it plateaued. Like, I felt bored. But the ending was really cool though. The ending was a blast. I did really enjoy the ending so it was able to save the book. It's really political. Um, the characters were also great. The writing style was, you know, just the problem with the plot and the pacing and the middle. But it, yeah, it's more on revolution. It's more on dragons. These main characters have this mental connection with their dragons where they talk mentally and these dragons are going to obey them. Um, they're actually dragon riders and they fight uh, with other dragon riders also. So there's a war, it's really political and there's a revolution happening. Um, yeah, so if you're into that and if you're into, uh, if it's okay for you to have this kind of pacing where it's started really, you know, high stakes, really fast, and then it gets plateaued, and then you don't know how the book will end, but the great ending though. So I might, I will still give the second book because I've heard the second book is better. So based on how the this one ended, I will be picking book two. <laughs> so yeah, again, 3.5 or 4-ish stars out of 5. The next book I've read after the Fireborn by Rosamunda, Rosaria Munda is going to be another fantasy, but this time under the category, age category, um, middle grade. But this is Ray Bearer by Jordan um, Ifweko. <laughs> this one, I think the marketing or the people who reviewed or recommended this one tricked me. I don't know. This is my personal <laughs> uh, take. I think that this is not a middle grade. It felt more like an adult fantasy, or probably you know, an an uh, a young adult fantasy. I don't know if it still passes a young adult because the themes and the story and how it unfolded feels like more an adult to me, <laughs> not a middle grade. I do understand it's going to be a middle grade since most of our main characters are middle grades, but. The themes and the story felt like an adult, it could pass as an adult fantasy. But if we're just going to take that, you know, me being nitpicky of what am I reading, because I was really expecting this is going to be a, you know, a cute fantasy where there's going to be animals and all. But it was really dark. It was dark. It was violent sometimes. There's bullying, there's war, there's blood, which, okay. Uh, you know what I mean? That's why I felt it was more on young adult or adult. Um, there's betrayal <laughs> and such um, something that are not middle grade dish to me um, yeah we're following our main character here she lives or grew up in an orphanage raised by nuns basically she was being raised there because she was the daughter of a devil and people are trying to you know keep her away from the society because she might destroy the world so that's all I can tell you and then she ha was contacted by her mother and her mother's servants and she knew uh, she was told that she was made for bigger things so she were uh, became a spy and did an undercover it wasn't a spy because the I'm not going to tell you but you have the idea what this book is all about she's going to have an undercover mission while she goes to the palace and befriend the future king and that's where I'm going to end I don't want to really spoil you but yeah there's some sort of school setting here because they were they're going to classes and they're having these trials and they have these classmates they're in the dormitory there's some settings about that one 
Uh, if you're into that, then highly pick this one. But again, towards the middle until the end, the mood really changes. It gets really fast-paced. It becomes really bloody, and there's a lot of violence. And especially how it ended, it. It's really an adult fantasy for me. The magic system were really also rich and it was not really complicated, it was really easy to follow. I love the magic system and the writing style, so check this one out. I'll definitely read the second book. I still don't have a physical copy. The next book I've read after Ray Bearer is going to be one of my favorite author, Karen Thompson Walker. This is her second and latest book, The Dreamers. Her first book is Age of Miracles, which I'm a big fan. I read it 10 years ago. Or, yeah, more than, probably almost, yeah, already 12 years ago because I read it back in 2012. Yeah, 11 years ago. Um, this one is a science fiction. Don't be fooled by the cover. It looks, it doesn't look like a science fiction. It looks like a cute teenager book about getting out there, traveling, and being a prodigal, uh, prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, going to do some nasty stuff as a teenager that's the impression that it cover for me but this is a science fiction we're basically following our main characters uh during the start of this potential pandemic so the setting is set in this um town small town in the u.s uh mostly surrounding the university it's not a really famous town uh up until the 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 sleeping sickness happened so basically in the sleeping sickness uh, it's like a viral infection where if you are infected, you're going to sleep and you don't know, people don't know what causes it or if you're still going to wake up because most of the initial um, patients died in their sleep. So you're just going to be in this deep sleep until you're going to be in coma and then you can't really wake up. You're, then you started to dream. Some pe some patients are you know, shouting because they're having this really deep dream. Um, that for the, that's you know that's basically is so we're following your set of characters um, they are different people across the town who's really trying to survive trying to avoid the virus some people who visited the the university but since it was on lockdown they were quarantined the, the entire town so they were really trapped and they don't have homes to stay um, yeah it's really chaotic it, like imagine a start of an apocalypse um, but it's a really small setting, which is dumb. So we're going to follow our set of characters. There are some characters who are a mom and a dad, which the mother just gave birth to a week old baby. Uh, there's also two younger, two sisters who ha loves uh, cats. So they have mo a lot of cats. And then this pandemic, uh, this this viral infection happened, and then there you know there's a shortage of water and and food, and then they have this problem because. Uh, their father went out and they never went home again so they were they were left in this house with their cats and they don't know where to get cat food how, how to feed the cats if they're allowed to go out it's more on a survival thing and um yeah still a lot of characters that you're going to be really interested to i gave this one four out of five stars the only reason why is because i felt that the ending could have been hmm, better i was really disappointed to the ending i thought it was really solid uh solid read uh a perfect five star read for me up until the ending i didn't really expect the ending it was really bad um <laughs> it was like a lazy ending for me um i wish the author uh went to a different direction on how she ended the book it felt like she ran out of time the publisher what the book as soon as possible and she decided okay i'm just going to take the easy route and end this like this so that was it was really messy i did not really like the ending though i still love the current thompson walker her writing style iconic which i'm a big fan not it's going to be polarizing the writing style is going to be polarizing but for me it really works for me so i'm a big fan so yeah it was a bummer though i really wish the ending was different so that it could have been an all-time favorite book but yeah i still did enjoy it the next book I read after The Dreamers is going to be a new all-time favorite, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I'm a big fan of Emily St. John Mandel uh, since after reading her the book Station Eleven, which I also love, the, the series adaptation on HBO. Uh, this one, I've been eyeing this. I actually started reading this on my Kindle back in May or April, and I stopped because I said, okay, this book is too good. 
and I need to purchase a physical copy of this book. So I finally got a physical copy from Fullbook. It was around yeah one peso before it hits a uh, one thousand peso. So it's almost a thousand peso uh, book, but it was worth it. I don't really care how much I spent for this one, but I really really did enjoy it. It's a solid five stars for me. As what I mentioned, it's a you know, it's a an old, new all time favorite. Um, it's uh it's a short book around 255 i actually read this in probably less than 24 hours um not in one sitting though because i've been you know resting and playing video games in between uh, i was really hooked from the beginning so we're following three parts here not three parts three different perspective or timelines so there's the past the present and the future so it's basically a time traveling book but I'm telling you, it's the the main story about this one is not really focused on time traveling, though time traveling is really relevant uh, in the story. So we're following the first timeline, which is in 1980s. So we're going to have this really laid back, no technology, no phones setting, and then the second timeline is going to be we're following the, the modern uh, timeline where you know there's iPhone, there's laptops, there's iPads, internet, and the next. Timeline is going to be a thousand years after uh, from now. Uh, the main character or the timeline we're following is set in the colony in the moon where the life in Earth is a, a thing in the past. But the Earth still exists, but it's really, you know, probably not habitable. Ha you know, hab habitable. And there are there's people, still people living here. Um, the main character we're going to follow who lives in the colony of the moon is actually an author so she's going back to 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 the earth and um, do some book tour because she's promoting her books so she has these fans and all and then pandemics happened in earth so that's how I'm going to end my um, my my short uh, synopsis of what this book is all about but yeah, I, uh, the rest is for you to really find out. Um, at first, I don't really get where the story and how this book, where this this book is heading, how the story will. It doesn't make sense, in general. The first half doesn't really make sense. So, I'm going to set that uh, expectation to you guys. So, if you're going to pick this book, please expect that the first half of this book will not really make sense. You're just going to be really intrigued. Um, I don't really know what's happening some sort of that feeling um the three timelines that not really connect to each other so you'll be you'll be confused but please do continue and try to finish this book because there's really a lot of things that you're going to to learn the first one is uh, this book was written during the pandemic the you know covid 19 pandemic and i think this is an uh the the author wrote this based on her based on the learnings uh, her learnings during the pandemics and which we can relate because we've been through the COVID-19 pandemic well I was really able to really empathize with the characters in the story because I was able to experience those hardships during the pandemic being on lockdown um, not able to go out of your you know four corners of your house um, it really changed you and it's not just changed you it changed you as a person so the way you think about your you know your relationship with with your loved ones you it, everything th seems to really slow down so i have this you know motto in life now where uh when if i feel that i really need to speed up that's the time i really need to slow down and this book just really made me appreciate that you know when you need to speed up you need to slow down and just really focus on living the present and that really wasting your energy on what's in the past and what will be the future just really pour 99.99 percent of your energy on living the past and making the best out of your present life oh sorry 99.99 percent living in the present and um um you know making the best out of this your the press your present lives um appreciate the people around you don't take them for granted just really enjoy life that's what i really learned about this that's why it's really beautiful it's well, must read highly recommended please do read this you're going to learn a lot of good good stuff and that you can really apply in your life i right, trust me next book i read 
is a sequel to one of the best books I've read in the past years. It's going to be Last is Lost by Andrew Sean Greer. The first book is Last, which won the Pulitzer Prize in Fiction in 2017. And I read that two years ago, which I really loved, gave it five stars. This book and Glass, the, the book prior to this, is really polarizing. It's not really for everyone. Uh, if you've heard someone who really hates it, then it's valid because the book is not really for them. But this book was really made for me. <laughs> um, I really did enjoy it. So I, you know, found myself in the polar, in the good polar side, on the a fan polar side. So I'm a big fan of Anderson Greer. His writing style, though, is not also for everyone. So you might really hate it or you might really love it. So re it's really polarizing. Um, another thing that I've heard that people are not really loving less and less is lost because of the humor, because they were expecting it's going to be really funny. Which, please, it is funny if you are the correct target reader because humor is really subjective. For example, you know, the American humor and the difference of American humor and British humor. So, British humor is really humorous or funny to British people, while American will not, ab will be, will be, will not be able to appreciate it more than British people and vice versa. So, this is what happened to less. So... Some people found the jokes cringy, the punchline cringy. But for me, it really worked for me. Um, we're going to follow our... What I'm going to talk about this book is just the synopsis of Les. Because this is again a sequel, so I don't want to spoil you. So and what happened in Les is we're going to follow our main characters, Arthur Les. Uh, he's an author. And he's an old gay guy. Um, am I allowed to use the word old? Because he hates being called old. But that's the reality. He's getting old, he's growing up, and he's alone. He doesn't have a partner. He used to have a partner, but it, uh, it became the, the one that got away. Um, so he became obsessed with this idea where he don't want to die or grow old lonely or alone. So he was really obsessed in this idea that he needs to look for his special someone. And then he got tired and then she found himself really lost because he's not really happy or passionate anymore of his passion in writing. His his career in writing is not that great. So he was just really seeking satisfaction in life. So it's really dark actually. Um it also tackles some mental health problems because our character has have is having issues with his relationship with his parents and his sister. And yeah. So we're going to follow Les uh, on the first book and he's traveling uh, in different parts of the world because he wants to go to these places to be inspired to write a new book for him to, you know, experience a new, a new, a new, new people, new culture for him to be uh, inspired to write his new, new piece. So, yeah, and Les is Lost is picks up on how the first book ended and it actually gave us a glimpse of the evolution of the um the relationship of less towards the other characters which i'm not going to tell you who because i don't want to spoil but yeah this one i actually really love this more than less um some people might not see it that way but i did because this one really taught me how to really appreciate the people that we love the people who were there all the time not take them for granted um do not um uh, it's more on how we balance our career and our relationship with our loved ones because you know reality is we are really too focused on our career on our job that we get to you know we sacrifice our time towards our loved ones we sacrifice our relationship and then we ended taking these people for granted we said okay i'm going to the meeting i'm not going to go home because it's just going to be okay for him or for her because we've been together for several years and she's not going to leave me so you became very really complacent so those kinds of stuff which is happening in reality it happened to me um so it can really relate that's why i really love this book so learn a lot of lessons so yeah it's really good the next book i've read after less is lost is going to be the people we keep by Alison Larkin. I've read this on my Kindle. Um, the main reason why it's actually an accident <laughs> why I read this because I just was walking. Uh, I, I visited some fully book branch here in Cebu and um, I was really eyeing for what book I should read next. 
Sorry for some of my unread books here. And I saw, I was just really skimming and I saw the people we keep and then check Goodreads. It was well reviewed, great stuff. So I downloaded uh, a Kindle version and tried to, you know, just read the first chapter and see if I'm going to like it. And then I found myself finishing the book. You know, it gave it five out of five stars. Um, it was great. It was a really great book. It was really emotional, but I got angry. <laughs> I was pissed to the main character at some parts of the book because she was really immature, which is understandable, really realistic at her age, at her you know description who she is. So basically, we're following our main character. Uh, she grew up without a mother because her mother ran away. So she grew up all by uh, uh, with her father in this mother home. Uh, they're not having great life. Uh, her father found a younger new partner uh, in which her father is always giving or investing her his time to this new partner and their their new you know soon to be child so this girl is you know um growing up and she wished that her father is going to give her a lot of attention a lot of guidance but it's not happening instead it's being you know the energy or time or attention of her father is being given to this new partner and this forming a new family and just just you know an additional piece or somewhat uh, a person that her father she, she felt her father doesn't like so she skips school she's really passionate in singing she works in a bar and she performs because she's really passionate to you know when writing songs she composes compose songs up until the point where she ran off and stole her father's car and traveled on different states in the US just playing on the streets to earn money and for gas and she's homeless <laughs> and in order for her to survive it's just really sing on bars do some gigs and she meets a lot of people along the way which is what the majority of the story is uh, how she interacts with these people how she formed new relationships that's why the title is the people we keep because she's going to encounter a lot of people in her lives uh these people are going to inspire her going to destroy her challenge her um yeah we're basically just following her perspective entirely in the book and she's going to make a lot of bad decisions which made me really angry um which i think was the purpose of the book at all <laughs> she was not a perfect character she's a really flawed character which i really love because it it the story really became more realistic so yeah it's the people we keep so it's all the people that she met along the way and decided if you know if this relationship that we're building uh is the time of me investing in this person is going to to work uh we're also going to follow our main character where she has this tendency where if, uh, if everything goes really challenging or wrong she just run away so he became that person so it's 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 tough it's a tough book but it's a really beautiful story um also the ending were perfection so i really love the ending see the story really stuck to me i am going to purchase a physical copy soon uh, it deserves to be on my shelf that book deserves to be on my shelves and if you're trying to if you're planning to pick this one up i have suggest you do because it's 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 a perfect book <laughs> And now we're down to the last book I've read this year, uh, in 2022. Uh, this is going to be sold by Patricia McCormick. Uh, this one, I did not really expect I'm going to pick. Uh, I did also expect that I'm going to finish this before the 2022 ends. Um, basically, this is the last book I've read in the year 2022, just a day before Christmas, or days before Christmas. Um, this book gave me a lot of emotions. Most of the emotion I felt while reading the book is, again, anger. Uh, we're going to follow our main character. She is a Nepali girl who lives in the rural area. Uh, there's no technology. She's really full of innocence. Um, we get to experience some cultures of Nepal, especially the rural area. So she, their family only lives on the things that they harvest. So one day, um, her father died. So her mother married a new, a new man uh, who became her stepfather 
uh, because there's this culture in Nepal where men are superior and women are, are just, you know, servants of men. So if you are a woman who is widowed, you are going to be useless. So you need to look for a partner. So even though this new stepfather is abusive and also um, into gambling, up to the point where they have nothing and his uh, her father is really obsessed in gambling, her father sold her to a a city a city woman in India, where. She was, her father told her to, her stepfather told her that you're going to the city to be a maid at the age of 13 or at the age of 12. Uh, and so that you can send money back to us so that your younger uh, sibling can survive your mother. You can buy a roof to our house. Your mother can eat or can do that. And she was really, you know, she wants to help her family. That's why she said, okay, I, I can be a maid. But what she didn't know is that she was sold to be a whore, <laughs> to be a prostitute at the age of a really young age so she was brought with her full innocence she doesn't have don't know how to speak the language in india the the the, the urban language in india um he's in she's in new delhi she was actually you know imprisoned and was really forced to to become a prostitute at, at the really young age so that's a title why it was title sold so we're going to follow our main character through the journey, her life in the in this house in India, uh, the customers she met, it's really you really you're going to really feel a lot of anger <laughs> over this one, which I did. Um, it was a superb book, and what you I did not expect is it's going to be written in a prose, in a poem style, um, which made the book really easy for me to read, and it was really fast. I fed. I finished reading this in a, one day, I think. It's a solid five stars for me. Um, and it deserves a lot of awards. I just discovered it won a lot of awards, aside from being a National Book finalist, uh, National Book Award finalist. So, highly recommend this one. Um, I was, I almost unhold this one. I'm glad I did not and gave this one a try because this is a hidden gem. And yeah, such a really strong book. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for sticking this long in my video. Um, wish you all the best. <laughs> Happy New Year once again. And um, thank you for watching. My name again is Joel. You be a reader. Take care and keep safe. Bye-bye.